Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech World with Sahana. In today's video, we are diving into 20 must-know interview questions all about automating triggers in Jenkins. And I will guide you through each one in a clear, simple and beginner-friendly way. But before we jump into interview questions, let's quickly break down the fundamentals so you have a strong foundation, like what is Pol SCM, Webhook and Cron. And we will have a quick overview of the default Jenkins file syntax you need to know. Once we have got that covered, we will roll up our sleeves, dive into some hands-on automation, showing you exactly how to automate with Jenkins file. To trigger build automatically in Jenkins, that will help you crack your next DevOps interview. So let's get started. Starting with question number one. What are different ways to trigger a Jenkins job? And how do they work? Here are three common methods, PolSCM, Webhooks, and Cron. PolSCM means Jenkins checks your source code repository at regular intervals to see if there's any change. You set this up using a Cron style expression. For example, if you want Jenkins to check every 30 minutes, and if Jenkins detects any change during one of those checks, it triggers the pipeline. This method works well, but it still pulls the repo even if nothing's changed. So it's a bit heavier on resources. Webhooks. This is a more efficient and instant approach. Instead of Jenkins pulling the repo, the repo like GitHub or GitLab notifies Jenkins when something changes, like a push to the main branch. You set this up on the repository side by adding Jenkins webhook URL. And once configured, as soon as someone pushes code, Jenkins gets a ping and starts the pipeline right away. This is a faster, cleaner than pole SCM because there's no constant checking in the background. Cron. Cron lets you schedule jobs based on time, whether or not code has changed. For example, if you want a job to run every night at 2 a.m., say for a nightly build or cleanup task, this method is ideal for time-based tasks that aren't necessarily tied to code changes. This is mostly used for backups, database migration, or full regression test runs. So to summarize this, use Pole SCM when you don't have webhooks or need regular checks. Use webhooks for instant triggering on code changes. This is the most recommended one. And use cron when you want time-based scheduling whether or not the code has changed. Now let's discuss about the default syntax of Jenkins file. It starts with the word pipeline, which defines the start of Jenkins declarative pipeline. Agent any. This tells Jenkins to run the pipeline on any available agent. Stages. This starts the block that will contain all the pipeline stages. Stage. Declaring a stage name built in the pipeline. You can name it anything like test, deploy, based on your workflow. Steps. This begins the block that will contain the steps to execute within that particular stage. I am using a echo statement here, building the application. This will print the message building the application to the console output. In real workflows, you will use build, test, or deploy commands here. Now let's start with some real automations. You need to run a pipeline every night at 2 a.m. So to trigger this build automatically, we use triggers block with a cron expression like 0 to triple star, which schedules the job to run daily at 2 a.m. We can name the stage as nightly build and include any commands required by our workflow inside it. 
Moving on with scenario number four. You want Jenkins to check every 15 minutes if there's any change in the Git repository. And if there is, trigger the pipeline. In this scenario, we use poll SCM to automatically check for code changes in the repository. Inside the trigger block, we use expressions with cron, h by 15, double star, double star, which means Jenkins will poll the SCM every 15 minutes. The h, hash, is used to distribute job start time to avoid overloading Jenkins resources. For example, if two heavy jobs are scheduled at the same interval, using H ensures they don't start at the exact same time. One job might run at 5 minutes past the hour and the other at 10 minutes, both repeating every 15 minutes. This reduces resource contention and improving performance. Moving on with our next scenario. A GitHub repository should trigger a Jenkins build as soon as a new code is pushed. How would you configure that? Well, in this scenario, we use a webhook to trigger the Jenkins job automatically whenever there is a change in the source code repository. Unlike scheduled triggers, webhooks do not require the trigger block. Instead, it requires the changes in Jenkins and GitHub. First, go to Jenkins, go to that particular job, click on Configure, then check the box beside GitHub hook trigger for Git SCM polling. Then in GitHub, go to Repository Settings, Webhooks, add the webhook, add the payload URL, and provide the content type. Moving on with our next automation. Can poll SCM and cron triggers be used together in the same Jenkins file? The answer is yes. Both cron and poll SCM can be used together inside the trigger block. For example, you can specify a cron schedule to run the job daily at 1 am and also include a poll SCM trigger to check for the code changes every 30 minutes. This means the job will always run once daily at 1 am regardless of the code changes and will also pull the source code repository every 30 minutes, triggering a build only if changes are detected. Moving on with our next automation. You want to skip the build if only documentation files are changed. We are taking an example here with the read.md file. So if you want to prevent the pipeline from triggering when only documentation files changed and not any code changes or configuration files, you can use the when block to control this behavior. For example, you can create a stage named skip documentation only changes and add a when block inside it with a not condition. Using the change set condition, you can specify a pattern to detect the documentation file. The double star matches any folder level and a single star matches the files. This way, the pipeline checks for changes in the documentation files anywhere in the repository, not just the root level. If it finds that only documentation files are changed, the pipeline will skip running this particular stage. So if the repository is polled every 10 minutes and only documentation files are modified, the pipeline will detect this and skip the build accordingly. Moving on with our next automation. You want to detect the code changes only in the API folder and trigger a specific API test stage. In this scenario, we need to use when statement in our pipeline. For example, first we will create a stage named run API test and add a when block that uses a change set pattern with API double star. 
the double star indicates that API is a folder and any changes inside it or its subfolder will trigger this particular stage. When polling the source code management every 30 minutes, if any change is detected within the API folder, the stage will be triggered accordingly. Moving on with our next scenario. You want to trigger your Jenkins pipeline only when there are changes inside a specific folder. Let's say example SRC folder. Now what's the difference between that API folder and this SRC folder? API folder was the main folder and this SRC folder can be a subfolder as well. Let's see how we will automate this. Instead of running the whole build every time anything changes in the repository changes, you want Jenkins to be smarter and start the build only if files inside the SRC or any nested SRC folder have changed. Here's how the Jenkins files handle this. Jenkins polls the repository every 30 minutes with poll SCM to check for updates. Inside the build stage, you add a when condition and change set star star slash SRC slash star star. This tells Jenkins run the build stage only if there are changes anywhere inside any folder named SRC, whether it's at the root or nested deeper. So what happens is if someone modifies files like SRC, application.js or backend SRC utils.js, Jenkins detects this and run the build. Moving on with our next automation. Run a Jenkins pipeline every hour, but skip execution if it's during the lunch break, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So in this scenario, we want to skip running the build during the lunch hour, but we can run at 2 p.m. after lunch ends. To achieve this, we use the trigger block with a cron expression that specifies the hours to run. The cron pattern 0, 0 to 12, and then 14 to 23, triple star. This means that the build will run every hour from midnight to noon 12. Then it would skip the 1 p.m. and then again run from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. This way, the build does not run during the 1 p.m. lunch break. I know I said we would cover 20 automation trigger questions, but to keep this video short and easy to follow, I have split it into two parts. These were the first 10 and the next 10 will be in part 2. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. And if part 2 is already live, you will find the link in the description below. Also join us on WhatsApp and Telegram for daily DevOps updates and follow us on Instagram for quick 60 second explanation videos.